Good morning. Well, today we have a new radio on the bench. Uh, this is a 1948 Crosley. It's a model 58 TW and it's a All-American 5 radio. And um, I have this radio in for a non-destructive Bluetooth conversion. So um, what the customer wants on this is this converted over so that it can play Bluetooth. Um, but that um, we make absolutely no modifications to the chassis whatsoever other than to um, to move some components that we're going to um, that we're going to need move so that we can put some new controls on it and uh, and get this working as a Bluetooth unit but in but have it modified in such a way that it can be put back fairly easily to a um, to a working AM radio Right, the customer's gone ahead and um, he's cut out a new back for this. He's done a really nice job. This thing fits really nicely. Um, and the reason he did this is so that we can um, put our, our power um, input and our auxiliary input on here um, and not uh, alter the original back on it with the, uh, with the antenna. So we'll go ahead and uh, and use this for the back. I'm going to go ahead and take this apart and show you what we're working with here. So here we have the radio chassis out of the enclosure. Pretty standard um, All-American 5 radio. Speaker's in really good condition. We're not going to touch that. Um, we're going to go ahead and replace this on-off volume knob with a uh, with one that uh, we can use to control the Bluetooth unit. Um, this original potentiometer um, is in the mega ohm range, and for the uh, to control the Bluetooth board, we need a potentiometer for a volume control in the kilo ohm range. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do this. We'll just take this out of its position and tuck it in behind the um, in the bottom of the chassis here, uh, so that can be easily just replaced. All right, um, this radio, um, in its original form, put out about one and a half watts of power to the speaker. So we want to take that into consideration when we choose the amplifier that we're going to use for this Bluetooth conversion. Um, so we've got a 69, close to 70 year old speaker uh, that we're going to be using. It's in excellent shape, uh, but we don't want to be putting 10 watts or 15 watts of power into this speaker. So we're going to go ahead and use a low powered um, a low powered uh, amplifier for this conversion and it'll sound just fine. The other thing we'll do here is here is the original bulb uh, that lights up the um, the dial. Um, I'm going to go ahead and tuck this in behind here. We'll just put a little strip, an LED strip here and um, that will uh, light up the dial here quite nicely. So everything that uh, we move or that we modify on this will be tucked away and, and, uh, and be able to be reversed here at any time. All right, so uh, let's get started and um, show you how I do this. Okay, so here are the components that we're gonna use for the Bluetooth receiver and amplifier. The Bluetooth receiver we're going to be using is this um, KRC84B. Um, we're going to feed that signal into this amplifier. And this is a PAM8403 type amplifier. Uh, we're going to be using this Murata DC to DC isolation chip to um, power the Bluetooth receiver. 
and what this will do is it will um, break the ground loop between the Bluetooth receiver and the amplifier and thus eliminate any of the Bluetooth noise that we could get. Um, so the Bluetooth receiver and the amplifier here both work off of uh, 5 volts. So 5 volts will come in to our amplifier, 5 volts will come into the Murata DC to DC converter. The Murata DC to DC converter puts out 5 volts of isolated power which will go into the Bluetooth amplifier. Oh, sorry, the Bluetooth receiver. Um, the signal from the Bluetooth receiver will go out to a volume pot and that signal will come back into the amplifier chip. Now this, the reason I chose this PAM8403 chip is because this is a um, 3 watt per channel stereo chip um, and so it's going to be fairly safe to use this with that uh, with the old speaker in the Crosley radio. Um, now this is a stereo amplifier. We're going to go ahead and only use one channel of it. Um, so coming out of the Bluetooth receiver, we're going to take the stereo signal that's coming out of the Bluetooth receiver. We're going to put this through a through a resistor network that will mix the stereo into a mono signal. We'll feed the mono signal into the amplifier and we'll only use one of the stereo output channels to drive the speaker. That way we'll have um, both channels of the stereo signal mixed and going out to the single uh, mono speaker on this Crosley radio. Alright, so let me put this together and uh, I'll come back and show you what I've done. Okay, so we're back. Um, so here's the, uh, here's the Bluetooth board and uh, we'll go through some of the components of it. Again, here's the Bluetooth receiver. This is our amplifier. So let's look at power first. So first of all, we have power coming in through here, through this wire here. This is all a mess right now, but this will all be prettied up when it, uh, when it um, is put into the case. All right, so five volt input comes in here and a branch of the five volt goes to the amplifier. All right, um, five volt also feeds this Murata DC to DC isolation transformer. Um, so five volt comes out of here and through this inductor and capacitor supplies the Bluetooth board. So the only thing that this isolation um, transformer is running is the Bluetooth board. All right. Um, so also out of this, we have a set of LEDs that we're going to use to replace the light bulb for the uh, tuning dial. All right, signal pathway. Signal pathway comes in here through the Bluetooth antenna through the Bluetooth receiver, comes out through a series of mixing resistors here, which take the um, stereo signal and convert it into a mono signal. I've got this just going through this wire into the right side of the um, amplifier, and then I have the amplified signal coming out here to the speakers. All right. Um, we will eventually put a potentiometer in line with this and this will uh, act as our volume control. We'll also uh, use the uh, that same potentiometer has a switch on it. We're going to use that to be our on off switch as well. All right. So what I've done here is I've gone ahead and hooked up this Bluetooth board um, to the speaker. All right, so the output of this Bluetooth board is going into the speaker here. And we're gonna go ahead and uh, see what this sounds like. Okay, so I've got the volume turned all the way down. I'm not hearing any Bluetooth noise.
Volume's turned up about a third of the way. The speaker sounds really good. There's no distortion. I'm not hearing any rubbing. I'm not hearing any um, anything that would indicate that there's a problem with the voice coil. All right, it seemed to handle full volume quite well. It's pretty loud. Uh, I don't know how much the speaker is being exercised, so I'm not going to have this on a very loud volume. Okay, it looks like everything is in order. Um, we've got our Bluetooth amplifier board all set up. Uh, we know the speaker is good and working just fine, so we're not gonna have to address any issues with that speaker. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to um, look at uh, how I'm gonna address the, uh, the on-off volume switch. which is right here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and replace that with a more appropriate size potentiometer. Um, we're going to save this one. We're going to take it out, tuck it back into the chassis, and then um, we'll mount the new potentiometer on there. All right, see you back in a little bit.